Oh, it's yeah. our 13th episode. Oh. How good is that? Do, 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 do. Hey, what's so, the today? Is it the 13th today? Let's, we could pretend it is. <laughs> yeah. Or you could just <laughs> release this on the 13th. <laughs> yeah. The 13th yes. episode on the 13th day. <laughs> yeah, That's be like on Friday the 13th. Seventh I'd have to sun, wait. Seventh sun. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, welcome, welcome. Pod of the 13th day. <laughs> yes. So, welcome, everybody. I'm Steve. I'm Kevin. And this is Nerds Talk, and it is our 13th episode, which we're really proud to do. I actually thought that I would um, that you weren't going to be available, and I was going to have to do a lonesome 13th episode. So, I'm glad you're here, Kev. Oh, no, I've been busy um, at work. Yeah. Yeah, it happens. I keep, I, I keep saying that, you know, work should be a secondary thing. <laughs> Hang on, if any of our bosses are listening to this, he doesn't mean it. <laughs> work always should... comes first. <laughs> so, what I thought we could do is talk a little bit about um, the number 13. Let's start with that, because it's, it's been... The number 13, I always... Because I'm a little bit sad... My whole life I've said 13 is me, my lucky number, just because people say it's an unlucky number. So it's always been associated with bad luck and misfortune. Mm. And that's across um, I mean, that's across many cultures across the world. Really? Um, yeah, and the, but there's, I mean, there's loads of different theories as to why. Um, but most, uh, most, I think it, it just seems to stem from some sort of superstition and folklore. It's like one of the com- most common explanations for the unlucky number um, is that it comes from the Bible in the Last Supper. Yeah. So when, when Jesus was betrayed by Judas um, and he was the 13th guest at the table. Yeah, that's why you can never stick to have 13 people, a reservation for 13 people, I think, in America, isn't it? Oh, really? I didn't yeah. know that. It's a bit like, um, don't they miss out the number 13 in in streets? Not every street, no, no, obviously. It's the, but they... um, there's no floor 13. I might be making this up, but I'm pretty sure <laughs> there's no floor 13 in America. But with the door numbers, I don't think, they, I think they miss, or they don't deliver to any door that has 666. <laughs> what, the post office? <laughs> Yeah, Royal Mail. Like I'm not delivering these there. No, that's the devil lives there. But yeah, I think I think it's the they don't have a thirteenth floor because isn't there a ride at like Disneyland? I think it is where you've got the Tower of Terror. Tower of floor Terror thirteen or something like that. You go to. I love the Tower of Terror. I took um I took my son on it when he was just just tall enough. So I think he was six, <laughs> and I was like. You got to go on the Tower of Terror. You're tall enough now, right? So I took them on. Right, it was really funny because you know you kind of go through a basement to get to the lift, yeah. and he started getting scared in the basement. Right? <laughs> oh, you white. <laughs> <laughs> so then we went to the lift, and a load of strange stuff happens. And then you sit in the cart, and, and you know that it's you see the family who wave at you, and then they kind of vanish, and the window yeah. kind of moves around. It's all really cool effects. And then we got to the top, and I've actually got the video. Of us, um, because you know you can you can um. Oh, actually, at the time I was um, uh, I had the Disney was it the Disney account, um, uh, and and every uh, all all your videos and photos that are taken throughout the parks are just saved on there, so you oh, can access right. everything. Yeah. So I've got I've got the video. I put it on his little little YouTube channel, <laughs> but it's it's really funny because, um. It shows you his face is just really funny because it's just kind of like, what the hell is happening? <laughs> as as the as the whole as you know when it, it goes up in the air and then you see out over Florida and then all of a sudden it just drops. Classic. Yeah, I like that's, that ride. It just that's takes how... ages to queue for that one. Yeah. Oh yeah, we had yeah we had a long queue for that one. But uh, we digress. Um... Yeah, we digress because. What are we talking about? We're talking about um, the 13th guest, as Judas Iscariot being the 13th guest at the Last Supper. And it's yeah. often, the number 13 is then often seen as a sign of bad luck. And it's let the, um, a lot of people just believe in that it's a, a cursed number. Oh, and, uh, 
Friday the 13th. I think that was mm. the date of the execution of the Knights Templar by King Philippe of France, I think it was. Ah, He wanted yeah. their wealth or something, so he gave the order on that date to simultaneously like have them all rounded up because he wanted their whatever the secret they had. And apparently, mm. you know, a lot of them is going with whatever the secret was, apparently the Holy Grail, but... Depending well, on which Dan Brown film you're watching. Um. <laughs> well, so the Knights Templar, so they were a religious order of knights who, um, they they actually, they were founded in um, 1119 and they were there to protect Christian pilgrims in the Holy Land and they became really wealthy and powerful over the years. Yeah, they found and, something in the Holy Land, they reckon, that something that gave them a lot of power. Yeah, this is uh, well. The, the temple official... on the mount. Read about that. Oh, that sounds like an interesting one to look into. But they, I mean, they, the the official sort of line, although it's not really an official line, is it? But um, that they just eventually, like you say, came into um, conflict with King Philip. Philip, he was the Archi- Philip the Fourth of France, and um, Philip was apparently deeply in debt to the Templars. Yeah. So, and, and because he was the king, he kind of saw an opportunity to seize all of their wealth by having them all arrested. So, um, uh, or so it was on Friday, October the 13th, um, in 1307. That oh, two thirteens. There you go. Oh uh, yeah. Um, so a load of, uh, it was at dawn agents of King Philippe arrested hundreds of Templars throughout France. Um, and the arrests were all carried out in secret. Um, mm-hmm. The Templars were taken to prisons throughout France. And not all of them were tortured, but a lot of them were tortured into confessing to a sort of a variety of heretical practices, including like worshipping idols and spitting on the cross. So a lot of them kind of tortured into, um, into that. And the types of torture... Let's get let's get let's get dark. So the types of torture were water torture, and that was like suspending um, <laughs> suspending the victim. I don't know why I'm laughing at this. Suspending yeah. <laughs> the victim upside down and pouring water into their mouth and nose until they kind of just drown. <laughs> oh. um, they had uh, the rack, and this this was like stretching the limbs out. They would tie them to this rack and. Um, stretch them out until, and not just stretch them out a bit, but until they were like dislocated or even torn. Oh. God, so yeah, limbs getting torn off. That's how that's how uh, brutal that was. Oh, I'd like to have that done to myself. Yeah, but you know, for those that didn't that liked a little bit of pain rather than you know having arms ripped off, there was the thumb screw, <laughs> and that involved crushing the uh, the like the victims' thumbs. With a metal device. What? <laughs> the thumb. thumbs? Yeah, their thumbs. Um, and there was another one as well called um, the strap, no, the, the strapado. And this, <laughs> this involved, it was another one. I know, <laughs> it sounds well dodgy. <laughs> the strap on. Well, <laughs> this involved suspending somebody by I their like arms. Suspending, don't they? <laughs> <laughs> so they suspend them by their arms. Um, which were tied behind the back until the shoulders dislocated. And here comes <laughs> like, like, um, There's a common theme here. Yeah. Tying up and suspending <laughs> and dislocations. Yeah. I mean, who comes up with this stuff? And uh, there was also um, fire torture as well. So they placed people's feet in hot fire or like an iron plate oh. um, and just burnt them until they went, oh, I confess to everything. <laughs> oh, I just confess to everything. I was like, well, I'll just skip out the torture. I'll confess to whatever it is you want. <laughs> Mind you, you might get the odd person who's a bit like, a bit like Mr. Slave. <laughs> oh, yeah. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Have you seen the South Park episode where Mel Gibson's like, oh, you want to torture me, do you? Oh, and yeah. He's, he's like, putting his nipples. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I'll never talk. <laughs> That's so funny. <laughs> but, um, yeah, all of these tort obviously the torture was designed to be as painful and um, as humiliating as possible, as if, you know, um, as, if, as if the pain isn't enough. 
But um, well, I wouldn't but worry be, about the humi- The pain would counteract the humility, being humiliated. I'd be like, I'd be more worried about the pain than like. Can you imagine? You can see my knob or something. Or... <laughs> can you imagine? Yeah, you're worried about being naked while your while your arms are getting sort of dislocated and torn off. <laughs> yeah, yeah I'd right. be like, oh god, they can, they're laughing <laughs> yeah. at my knob. <laughs> <laughs> well, just don't worry me. No, well, some of them, um, some of them just confessed without being tortured because you know the thought of being tortured is just uh, a little bit much for them. Yeah, I wouldn't. I'd just confess. I'm like, all right, um, if you're gonna torture me, I'll just obviously accept that that's what you're gonna do. Yeah. I'll just tell you what you want to know. There you yeah. are. What do you need? Yeah, and then if I, t- he'll be like. Right, I don't want to be tortured. If I tell you everything you want to know, like, what's my punishment? Torture. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You're like, oh, okay. <laughs> it's a bit like it's a bit like um, the witch trials, wasn't it? When they they'd be like, right, it will tie you up and chuck you in a river. If you if you float to the surface, you're definitely a witch. If you drown, then oh, okay, we'll let you yeah, off. Yeah, <laughs> we, we got it wrong. <laughs> oh. Uh, but like I said, not, not all of them were tortured, um, but I think most of them were. <laughs> and actually, other some of them were actually acquitted of the charges. So, um, it, apparently, well, apparently, I mean, it sounds like a really dark sort of chapter in history. A reminder of the lengths that people go to when they are motivated by greed and power, um, you know, to take others' wealth. <laughs> but... Um, some say that it's also a reminder of the importance of uh, due process and the right to a fair trial because, you know, uh, none of the in- Templars were given that. It is interesting as well. You wonder about how accurate is that historical account because you're only going to have one. So there's no like loads of news agency can scrutinise it at the time. You've only got one <laughs> version of that history that would be available. Yeah. Like, oh, it's so quite old though. Uh, the Friday, the thirteenth of the thirteenth century, or uh, you mm. just think is that they've elaborated that a little bit, or maybe, yeah. Well, it was. I mean, it still took another five years before the whole order of the Templars was just dissolved. So it was in no, thirteen twelve. Around, they're still around. Yeah. So that, oh, yeah, that could be a that's that could Illuminati. be a... They're the Illuminati, aren't they? Uh huh. Yeah. They're Klaus Schwab of the World Economic <laughs> Forum. <laughs> You will own nothing and be happy. <laughs> or you won't die like pigs. <laughs> well, apparently, according to history, they were just never able to recover from it. But you, just, you never know. It could be. I mean, the whole thing could be made up, couldn't it? But remember, where, was nice it? Templar could have made all this up. So uh, we all got executed, so they can all go in hiding. Yeah, and hide the Ark of the Covenant or whatever it is they found in Jerusalem. Um, well, remember think... if it is the Ark of the Covenant, don't look at it, close your eyes, <laughs> or weird spirit ghosts are going to come out and melt your face. A la yeah. Indiana Jones. Uh, well, just going off on one a little bit, um, I went to see the Indiana Jones. I told you this last oh, week, didn't I? God, um, you I didn't go and watch it. that, did you? I went to see it, and <sighs> in one sense. I was, uh, in one sense, I quite enjoyed it. Remember we talked about this, right? I enjoy loads of films all the time. Even crap yeah. films, I'm kind of like, I see the, the good side of it. Um, but here's the thing with Indiana Jones, right? Spoiler alert. The first the first sort of quarter of it, I think, um, is, well, you, you watch an indie. Um, as, That's as what the reviews have said. Yeah, they said like the de-aged bits are all like an Indiana Jones film. Yeah. But so it's it's the old indie, so it's all computer generated. Yeah. So his face. So what they've done is they've tried to be clever about it because it's so difficult to get it right. And um, and I, I've got to say, some of the parts there was, I would say, the majority of this of the scenes where Indiana Jones as a young Indiana Jones, um, I'd say the majority of it is really really good, like the the um uh. The effects are just really excellent, but they've had to kind of shroud him in a little bit of um, uh, shadow uh-huh. to achieve it. Um, and and some of his facial expressions aren't quite right. Like when he's he's kind of having a he's fighting with them, 
with Nazi gods and stuff, as, as you'd expect, right? But he's fighting with them. Um, and he, uh, yeah, sometimes it just doesn't fit. He, like, you would expect him to grimace at one point, but he doesn't grimace. It, his face kind of stays more neutral. So that you can definitely tell that uh, it's it's not it's not the real, it's not him. You know what I mean? As, as it, it, well, it can't be anyway. How old is he? He's like 70 or something, isn't he? So, 78, but, I think. Yeah, so um, what did you just say? He's 98. 78. <laughs> All right, I thought he was 98. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be mental. <laughs> uh, but um, so anyway, it starts off and there's it's it's quite a cool sort of scene. Um, a lot of there's there's a lot of action, and um, like I said, the majority of the effects are excellent, like really good. Um, and, and then, then it comes Phoebe to... Waller Bridge comes along and ruins it all. Apparently, <laughs> no. I... You know what? I didn't mind her. I didn't really uh, mind you're her. The only one that doesn't mind her. But no, no. But here's the issue for me, right? I I don't mind. Her. I think she's quite quirky in that. But she's missing something, and she's Personality. she's yeah. <laughs> well, she's portrayed as like um a backstabber, and if you go back to the the early indie films, I'm not you know I'm not an expert on Indiana Jones, right? But I think his character, uh, he's got a lot of morals and stuff. Um, that's the way I kind of see him. But the way, if they want to hand over the baton from Indiana Jones, from uh, Harrison Ford, I should say, to her, as in, like, you know, if they want to continue the series and have her as the as the action hero, then um, she she doesn't start off very well, as in, like, yeah, she just doesn't have the morals. She's a bit of a backstabber. And um and I'm not really so I didn't quite connect with her in in the way that she she should be the hero of you know what I mean. She's um, not likable apparently, and she's very yeah. much it's her film with Indiana Jones being like, oh you're not very good anymore, and oh you're old. But who wants <laughs> to see that in an Indiana well, Jones film? And kind she of. is just so feminist and woke. She even at one scene doesn't she describe herself as being beautiful? She looks like a horse. Oh. <laughs> I didn't um I can't remember that bit where she describes herself as beautiful. But she's um yeah, it's missing some she's missing something. I don't think it's her, I think it's the it's the character. The I think script. it's um oh. and the script, yeah. So right, so think about this, right? You've got Indiana Jones right at the beginning, it's gone back in time and you see him having a good fight and, and loads of stuff, cool stuff happens, which then kind of leads you into uh, the store the, the present day story. Um and what I kind of thought would be absolutely awesome would to be another, uh, like I don't, I, I'm not saying like copy the film right, but another kind of scenario that is a little bit like Back to the Future Two, right? Because it's about time travel. I'm like, oh my god, this is going to be awesome, right? He's going to go back in time, right, and then he's going to do something that affected something in one of the earlier Indiana Jones films. You know, oh. I thought they were going to be so clever, right? I was, I was thinking, thinking this is going to be awesome. Sorry, go on. You know, you know that that was, they shot multiple endings and they had multiple scenes. So they basically patched that film together with like scrapbooking. And I believe one of the original oh. plots, it had them going back to the early films mm-hmm. and then erasing Indiana Jones from history because he changes something in the past and Phoebe Wallabridge would then pick his hat and for his, his whip up and then take over from him and it was going to reshoot scenes with her in instead of Indiana Jones and apparently uh, that, that was not well received. No, that wouldn't have worked either. So they had to do loads of reshoots. Yeah. Well, what they should have done is not even... This is the problem. They're trying to hand the baton over to somebody because Harrison Ford's getting old, you know what I mean? They can't. The I mean, eventually they could just be like, you know, completely computer generate Indiana Jones for future films as him as a young as a young indie, um, and that they could get away with that actually. But yeah, they could have had they could have done something so clever, weaved in loads of little bits of time travel to 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 travel back to the other three fil- the first three films or something, right? And and um, you know d- done something that would affect, and then it would make sense. Oh, what well, that's why that happened in the first film. You know what I mean? They could have been so creative, right? Instead, they just end up going back 
damn it, what's his name again? Archimedes. Archimedes, yeah. And they have a little chat with him, and that's it. <laughs> well, here's the thing. Oh, handing <laughs> oh. the torch over, etc. I mean, first of all, they had his son that they killed off off screen. So, mm. oh, because they wanted, obviously, to feminise it. But the thing is, why didn't they just make a new series of films, nothing to do with Harrison Ford or Indiana Jones, just originality? That's what Tomb Raider mm. was. It was yeah. like the, the female Indiana Jones that no one had a problem yeah. with. But you're, yeah. instead, you're trying to mess with an old franchise rather than coming up with your own new ideas. Hollywood is yeah. Right no, ideas. you're right. Though. You're right, though, because they could have made, they could have made. This is the problem, right? What they're trying to do is create characters that don't have any real flaws that they have to overcome and all that. Here's one for you: what they should do. Why no one does this? And if there's any Hollywood producers listening to me, right? You can have a series of films that are set in the 1920s early 1930s, like Indiana Jones, if they want a female character resolves revolves around a plucky, um, I don't know, um, plucky journalist or something like that that they start off with, and it's mm-hmm. all surrounding the old Lovecraft stuff, like the Cthulhu mystery, oh, Cthulhu yeah. monsters and ancient alien god things, and yeah. she's fighting these cults that are trying to worship these gods and getting these strange artifacts from around the world and having a race around the world to retrieve stuff before these cult members can get their mitts on it to awaken yeah. Cthulhu or something. You've got the setting, you've got original stories based on Lovecraft stuff. Yeah. That would be good. That would be awesome. It kind of reminds us a little bit like, um, I haven't seen them all, but Penny Dreadful. Um, I know it's not exactly the same, but oh, you know that yeah, kind it, of thing it, where it's, it's, pulp, it's kind of yeah. period... Yeah. period pulp kind of stuff like that which Indiana Jones is in that sort of era so I don't know why they've never done you can have any character you want from that sort of era you could have like a, an PI investigator that's getting involved in stuff like a, a rough tough fighter like Indiana Jones that gets involved with trying to stop these cults from taking over the world looking for ancient artifacts that are linked to these ancient gods you could have any of that and have a whole series of films of original stuff. That's yeah. But no, let's let's go and rape Indiana Jones. <laughs> South Park reference, love it. Yeah. Ah, <laughs> uh, well, so, uh, two uh, seconds. I've just got to say something to Alexa. Alexa, dining room light fifty percent. Alexa, dining room light fifty percent. You could have gone up and oh, done it yourself. it's not bloody working. No, I can't because I've got... <laughs> hang on. Alexa, dining room light 50%. Oh, wrong, because I'm in the living room. Alexa, living room light 50%. <laughs> That's better. The thing is, right, so I know I'm digressing, but because I've got, like, smart bulbs everywhere, they're yeah. activated all by voice now with Alexa or on the app. Um, you're trapped in the system. Yeah, trapped trapped in the, the system. I can't just use a light switch because um, it, it will mess up the night the, the smart bulbs. Um, <laughs> but it automatically starts dimming as it gets like night time. And I'm starting to think I'm sitting here in bloody darkness thinking if we're going to talk about <laughs> horror, I'm having a bit of light. Yeah, because you're getting scared, aren't you? And we were talking about Cthulhu <laughs> and like Lovecraft stuff. <laughs> well, if we could just go back to um, the Night Templar. Oh yeah. Um, so, the, there are some details. Obviously, that there are some details that are known. We, we've kind of discussed that, but like the the events in thirteen oh seven when they were all arrested, it, it's still kind of shrouded in mystery. And you've got some historians that think that uh, King Philip was motivated by like a genuine belief that the Templars were like heretics. Yeah, um, right. <laughs> Yeah, and then you've got others that think he was trying to simply just trying to seize all of their wealth. Yep. But um, yeah. Uh, today, <laughs> this Friday the thirteenth is considered to be an unlucky day by many, many people. Although I don't think it's unlucky, but um, this, there is no scientific basis for the belief. <laughs> this is the basics of it. There's no evidence. That like the date of the Templars' arrest had anything to do with the superstition, um, and in fact, the um, uh, the superstition of like Friday the thirteenth 
seems to have originated like much later, like nineteenth century. Um, oh. But the superstition is it's just, it's likely to be a leftover of like the Middle Ages when like people were just more f- super superstitious and like fearful of the unknown. Um. Hang on, my bloody lights have gone off completely now. Hang on. Alexa, living room lights on 50%. <laughs> oh, that's better. It just literally turned itself off. Someone's <laughs> having a laugh. Go on, continue. Well, I mean, that's it really about the uh, <laughs> the number 13. <laughs> so basically, I thought could... Friday the 13th is just, uh, yeah, it's rubbish. <laughs> yeah. Why have I ended that? This is terrible. We need to make. We, we should have ended with something like um, something more, uh, something more sort of dark and mysterious. But no, nah, it just kind of. Hang on, yeah, I just... thought it was Friday the Thirteenth. Was bad lucky because Jason Voorhees will come and hunt you down in a hockey mask, <laughs> chop you up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I was obsessed with the horror films, but when I was really young. So, um, yeah. I remember the, first... the very first horror film that I watched and it was yeah. on video and it terrified me and I must have been maybe nine I think nine or ten maybe yeah uh, me, me, you say image oh Paul the Geist that was yeah it's still scary now you know yeah yeah freaked me out the, um, a pol- I think it's Paul the Geist too you know that scene when um, oh, yeah. the, the guy the lad looks in the mirror and he starts scratching his own face no, that's off. the first one is that the first uh, one? No, no. Yeah. Oh, is it? Oh, okay. His face oh. is pulled and rips apart, and he sees like it's because he's eating a steak, and then he sees those maggots yeah. coming out of the steak, and then he spits it out, and then he starts pulling yeah. his face apart. Yeah, that oh. terrified me. I was like, oh, oh my god. There are some great scenes, uh, just really simple stuff as well. Like when um, this is, I think this is part of the guys too, because they're uh, I think they're in a hotel, and there's there's a lot of mirrors down one side, and Hulk they come out of the three. room. I was a part of the history, and then the the camera kind of pans across, and you see that they are just in the mirror. They're not even in in the, walking down the corridor. Just great, great scenes like that. That was done using practical effects. All that third film yeah. as well. There's no like they actually had actor doubles that were walking down right next to them, and there weren't really mirrors. Very yeah. clever the effects on that film, but. It was a really troubled production, and the little girl died shortly after that. I think a lot of them died, though. A lot of them died of like health issues. Yeah. I mean, could have just been a, could have just oh, this is me again trying to sort of dumb everything down. Could have just been a coincidence. Well, the <laughs> um, do you know in Poltergeist Two, the old priest guy in it came. He looked proper scary. He was actually yeah. dying in real life. I think he had stomach cancer or something, and I think yeah. it was he died before they finished filming it, which is why he isn't actually in the end of the film, apart from some CGI monster version of him. Oh, wait, you make me want to watch the Poltergeist films again now. Only the first two. The third one's not very good. Um, <laughs> but well, that was, you know, the, the scariest thing I find in the original Poltergeist, it's the bit where they're, like, filming the staircase and they see all these lights coming down the staircase and the woman's yeah. going, there are all the lost souls. Like, oh. <laughs> yeah, it was very suspenseful, wasn't it? Like, um, I still the Spielberg film as well, of all things. Yeah, I haven't, um, I haven't seen them for years, but I've got them all on DVD, so that's it. I'm going to have to watch them all. Now. But what I'm trying to do at the moment, I'll, I'll have to put that on hold because. Insidious, The Red Door, brand new oh, yeah, film is out at the cinema. That. Well, I, I need to watch um, uh, Insidious 3 again before I go. <laughs> so I'm going to watch that probably tomorrow and then get myself down the cinema as soon as to, uh, and then I'll give you the verdict. Because I really mm. I really like the Insidious films. And it's not just because, it, it's kind of, they're really odd on there because they're a bit of a mix of daftness as well. Like, you know, the two... Um, I've forgotten the names now, but the, the two characters in there who are the uh, paranormal guys. Yeah, they, that's a bit of comedic they, relief. Yeah, they're just they're just silly, aren't they? And actually, <laughs> some some of the scenes in Insidious through the Insidious films aren't that scary, but I think as a whole, the stories. Um, I, I like the story. Now, what they there's a technique that 
I think why they're quite oh oh jumpy and all that because for years you'd watch a horror film and someone would be like standing like in front of the camera and then the camera would be coming up really close to them. You're like, oh my god, he's going to turn round and there's going to be a monster there. And he turns round yeah. and like, oh, it's just his wife that stood there. And, oh, it's a yeah. fake scare. And then the scare happens after yes. that. Where yes. insidious, it's like it's no, it's actually a scare. So it, <laughs> it throws you a little bit because you're expecting the fake jump, but it's not. Yeah. It's the actual monster. It's the actual scare. And I think that's what makes it a bit more. Oh, they've kind of like changed your expectations. They know that people expect a fake scare first. It's a formula in horror films. Yeah. Did I tell you? Did I, I might have mentioned this in in a few weeks ago in the podcast, but. I was I was watching Insidious the uh, in the first film, and there's a part of it where you see the um, uh, the demon above the kid as he's lying in bed. Oh, yeah. That scene, right? And when I finished watching the <laughs> when I finished watching the film, on one on one side of our bed, um, <laughs> That's a bed there's a demon standing there. Yeah, but um, uh, we've got an ear, earbuds charger. And it's really annoying because it's got little blinky lights on it. And there was um, these little blinky lights on the other side of the room, right, which kind of shone across um, just very dimly, but it kind of shone across the room um, next to uh, the bedroom door. And I was lying in bed, right, and I kind of looked <laughs> and I, I thought I saw a shadow move in right sort of up into the corner <laughs> behind the door. And I went, I, I, I lay there, right, for like a second. <laughs> and then, and I was looking in the corner of the room, didn't take my eyes off it, right? And I grabbed my phone and then lifted my phone up slowly and <laughs> clicked the side button so that it would light up <laughs> so I could see if there was anything in the corner of the room. <laughs> Hang on. I was like, so if uh-oh. you're suspected as a freaking evil demon in your room, I'm just <laughs> going to get a torch and light it up. I'd be out of there. <laughs> <laughs> it's really funny though because like if you'd have filmed it it would have been like just re- like just comical but I just kind of lifted it up really slowly and then pressed the button on the side of my phone and I was like phew there isn't oh, an I evil a- demon in the corner of the room <laughs> I had a night terror the other night I don't know if I told you I'm, I'm on my own because uh, wife's at work or night shift or whatever and um, I remember I was having this dream and in the dream, there was like the demon from the exorcist that was trying to get inside to possess me. And I'm like in a bed and I'm like, oh my God, oh my God. And I'm like calling out for help. And I put the hand on my knee. And I'm like, oh, thank God someone's come to help. And I've looked up and the freaking demon from the exorcist is staring right in my face. And I'm like, I woke myself up going, ah, 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 at like two in the morning. I'm like, Shit! I hope the neighbours didn't hear me screaming. <laughs> oh, don't you have nightmares anyway? Yeah, oh, I always i I have lots of vivid dreams, but I often like I've, a few times I've woken up screaming and woken the wife up, or I, I I have like I speak in my sleep a lot, but I speak in tongues like gibberish. <laughs> That's funny. I used to have night terrors when I was a kid. And I remember one, I actually remember this quite clearly, right? I'm having this night terror and my dad comes in the room and I must be, I must be about eight or nine, that kind of age. And um, and I used to always freak my dad out because there would always be a a man. I'd always be saying there's a man there, right? And, um, And he came in, right? And he's like trying to calm us down. And for some reason, he decided to say, to try to talk to us about stuff like facts, right? And he's like, did you know that if you took all of your intestines out and, and, and laid everything out, uh, uh, pieces of your body out, you could go around the, around the planet twice? And oh, I was like, like that. <laughs> so, so I started screaming, I don't want my body to go around the world twice. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. I, I don't know why he decided to tell us that. <laughs> but um, I remember I my me- first nightmare actually as a kid. Yeah, I must have been. I think I was three or four, and I remember there was a kid's puppet called Duncan the Dragon, and I remember like it's it, already it was dark, so scary. It, it, this dragon puppet 
clicking its teeth in front of my face and I remember screaming. Um, I must have been three or four. How weird is that to remember your first nightmare? That is weird, isn't it? But if you Google an image of Duncan the Dragon later on, you'll see why I was scared of that thing. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Everybody, anyone listening, Google Duncan the Dragon. I kids, bet it's horrific. Kids TV, yeah. 80s. 70s. Duncan the oh, Dragon. 80s. <laughs> oh, hang on, that would be the... Could be seventies or nineteen uh, eighty ish around then. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that seventies um, was even worse for how they made toys and stuff. Just really scary, like looking. Like if you look back on it now, at the time it would have been just quite normal, really. <laughs> oh, what was that? There's an advert, and I thought it was a spoof advert, but it's, it was actually a real, a real advert. It's on YouTube, but I think it's called Laugh a Lot, Baby Laugh a Lot. Yeah. And it's this doll that just rocks backwards and forwards, going, <laughs> <laughs> and then all these weird looking kids are all like that. They, they look like some weird horror film kids, a bit manic in itself. Yeah, a, a toy that just laughs at you. <laughs> and then the narrator is this bloke that's doing this fake laughing along with it, and it's just creepy. You Google it after this or YouTube it, baby laugh a lot. Oh, baby, laugh a lot. That's weird. But then I used to have Jack in the Box as a toy as a kid, and that thing used oh, yeah. to scare me. A clown would go <laughs> and come out of the box. <laughs> oh. Yeah, that's an old school one, isn't it? Yeah. The, the ones that you get now are like a lot more child friendly, as in like really sort of not scary at all. You've got like, um, uh, you know, the, um, the caterpillar. Um, Only the caterpillar, or is that not, a cake? Yeah, I think that's a cake. The, the one that, the, um, oh, I've forgotten who wrote it now. The the book that the caterpillar that turns in uh, that eats through um, an apple and a cake and a, all, all kinds of stuff before it turns into a, a butterfly. You know the kids' book. You uh, open it up and it's got loads of holes in it and stuff. Uh, and the pages, but the, oh, you don't know that one? Oh, that's a classic. It's really good. I think we've probably got about three of the same book in different sizes. <laughs> As in, because I don't have kids, so I'm not up to date with those sorts of stuff. Yeah, right? can you, you probably if you saw it, you'd probably remember it from from when you were a kid. Well, look, anyway, going back to the, the the number thirteen celebration of the thirteenth episode, um, forgot to mention that. As I feel um, like Sesame Street, today's episode is brought to you by the number thirteen. <laughs> yeah, guys, it's really windy out at the moment. I'm just looking at my because I'm sat by my garden doors. And there's some big trees out back, and they're just waving back and forth furiously in the wind. It's quite a creepy atmosphere to actually talk about horror. Um, something I forgot to mention was uh, and some other facts about the well, I don't know the fact, but other sort of things about the number thirteen, because there's a possible explanation for the fear of thirteen from Norse mythology, mm-hmm. and there's um there's a story about a, a dinner party. Attended by twelve gods, and then obviously oh, Loki. Sounds familiar. Well, the tr- it does, doesn't it? Yeah, actually, you mentioned this. You mentioned this last week, I think, um, or something similar. But the trickster Loki, uh, who was invited, he he arrived as the thirteenth guest, and he arranged for um, somebody to shoot Balder with a um, a mistletoe tipped arrow. And then Balder died, and um, and then the number thirteen became an unlucky number because of that, because he was the thirteenth guest. So that's so a... essentially the Last Supper kind of mythology repurposed. Sim- very similar, isn't it? Although I imagine Norse mythology mythology is older. Yeah, yeah, it is. Uh, you know, fact, that's why we have Christmas trees is because of Norse mytho- myth- mythology. Yeah. Why well, you have like the tree of it represents the tree of life with the North Star at the top. Yeah. I, I tell you what, really, if you're if you're interested in Norse mythology, then playing um, Assassin's Creed uh, Valhalla is such a good game. I to don't get need into to get into Assassin's Creed games, you know. Well, I, I'm not massively into them, but um, that one really piqued me interest. I mean, I've cl- I've clocked it almost everything. I've clocked almost everything. I've I've completed all of the um, <laughs> all of the missions, everything 
except I just have um, the last thing I need to do, and this is only just to get the trophies. Is is um, there are um, certain places you can visit and do um, uh, like a trial of the bear and tra- trial like those kinds of trials, um, and I just need to get a few more gold, um, achieve gold with a few of them so that I can get the trophies. But I'm kind of finished with the whole game, which it, it gets really disappointing when you get that far um, through it. Mm. Um, but it's an interesting game. I, and I love the, the effort that they put into all of the stories. And some of the some of the side missions, I mean, if, if, if all you want to do is, um, is get through and clock the whole game, finish it all, then um, you're not going to appreciate all of the everything else that's going on. Jeez, it's um, I, I've rarely complete games, but I mean, I it took me about twelve years to complete Skyrim, or the, yeah. at least the main quest in it. There's still stuff I can do in it. Yeah, well, I played they... Ghost of Tsushima the other few months oh, back. That was you... really good. Yeah, I haven't finished that game yet. Well, I, to be honest, I, to be fair, I haven't really started it. The stories are so great in it, and the character becomes more and more likable the more you play. Really good character development and story development in it. Maybe that you know that's what a lot of films are missing. So I'm um, writing a novel. I finished editing my novel, and I was using Pro Writing Aid to do the grammar checks and things. Yeah. Right. And some of the things it highlighted for me says the word crazy. You might want to consider changing that as it could be offensive oh, to some people. It's doing it, sensitivity writing now. Yeah. It also picked up the word because I'd used like there was an elderly man that stood. Oh, you might want to change the word. Elderly can be seen as offensive as well. I'm like, what? Seriously? Elderly? I can't use elderly. And it got worse. It was a scene where they ordered some food and the waiters brought their food. Waiter can be an offensive term. You might want to consider changing this to server. How what? is waiter more offensive than server? <laughs> I don't oh. know. That's oh, ridiculous. Just... Anyway, going going back to the theme of the show, the thirteenth episode, where you know we're talking about sort of um, scary type stuff. Um, I thought we could maybe discuss sort of supernatural creatures. So obviously the first. I got. Have you got the D and D monster manual? To have <laughs> <in front laughs> no, <of you? laughs> no. The first supernatural creature I was thinking is the simple one: ghosts. So you got like, you know, yeah, that is a simple one. Yeah. <laughs> but I, I think it's interesting. Um, not a lot of people sort of think about this. I don't think I never did. But um, you've got ghosts and you've got spirits. So ghosts are kind of like recordings in time, um, where you see, you pretty much see something that happened in the past, yeah. and you're like, oh my god, that was a ghost, um, a spirit it's a replay. Yeah, replay. Yeah. Um, and you usually get that in places like uh, castles and that, don't you, where uh, I don't know how true this is, I don't know if it's proven or anything, but the stone um, somehow seem- captures events um, in time. It's really... I- I'm not even sure how scientists haven't, you know, haven't done so much work on this to try and sort of prove it either way. It must be... Uh, anyway, um, in spirits... Are you know you can communicate with the spirit? Um, Ouija boards, yes. Oh, Ouija board. I've got a Ouija board. Oh, I want to do one so bad. (laughs) I'm not allowed to, though. I've been told, don't you? (laughs) Of all the things that you'd ever have to have a conversation to warn you about, like, don't you dare do a Ouija board when I'm not home. I've got a cool one. It's it's a round one, and it's got like a tr- it's kind of a really cool tree pattern on it, and you, it's got a piece of, uh, like a round plate of glass that goes Do on it top. Now. I don't know where it is. Probably oh. in the loft. I haven't had it out for a long time. Can I communicate <laughs> with Captain Howdy? I've I've never ever been able to actually communicate with the dead. In one of the first houses that I owned, I had the stair landing. Walk out my bedroom. And you'd look down and you'd see the landing, the stairs going down into the front room. And then you'd pass the stairs to go up the toilet. And one day, my girlfriend at the time came running back into the bedroom from the bathroom saying, I've just seen a shadow at the foot of your stairs. And I'm like, yeah, there's nothing there. It's just a trick of the light. It's nothing. 
And then later on, I've got up, went to the toilet, and on the way back, in the corner of my eyes, I saw a shadowy a shadowy shape stood at the foot of the stairs, at the bottom of the stairs, looking up. And I've turned around, it's running to the room, and I'm like, shit. And it was exactly the same as what she described it as as well. She said she saw it at the corner of the eye, and when she looked, it's run off, and it did the same for me. I had to take her home, and I've had to go back to that house on my own that night, and I was like, shit, shit, shit. Are you sure it wasn't a burglar? (laughs) Could have have been. (laughs) But then weird, (laughs) other weird stuff happened in that house. I had a I used to have, do you remember those old green printers? It was a bubble jet green printer. And I used to have that. It was on like, I, I had a small computer desk. I used to sit on the floor. And then I'd get like boot marks all over that printer. What? And I used to have like cream walls. And I had some posters up. And I took these big po- they're big Star Wars posters, actually. And I took them down one day. And there were all these muddy hands and Prince behind it. That was freaky. What? Behind it? Yeah. That is freaky. That's well creepy. And I think the scariest, one of the scarier ones, I went out, my mate came round, and then we went out together, right? I am obviously the last out. And then we both come back that later that evening, and bloody vacuum cleaner was in the middle of the room. And we're what? like, <laughs> well, it was under the stairs originally and he's like see you later and he left I'm like mm, don't leave me well this is the same house or is this... yeah same house really weird things um, and I think the weirdest thing that was a ghost that it didn't look like a ghost because it looked real but we were at, it was Sheppey and we were up like I think it was East Church and there was this road that went winding uphill past some woods and then it would turn around the corner and you'd be near like the cliffs and the beach. Mm-hmm. And we we're all walking up. There's about 10 of us and we we're all walking up this hill. And this old woman wearing like black clothing from head to toe, like a nun. And I remember looking at her, seeing, her, seeing heavy boots on her with a skirt. thinking that's really weird. And she's walked past us, looked at us and walked down the hill We've sort of gone around the corner. We all said, well, "Who was that?" So we've gone back round to look for her, and there was no one there, no one there at all. And apparently, there used to be a nunnery up the top of that hill until it, the cliff corroded and it fell into the sea years ago. Well, so that was quite weird, but it yeah. didn't feel like a ghost because it looked too real. Yeah. Well, a few years ago. I'm saying a few, this is about 15 years ago, right? Um, me and my mate, Kev, a <laughs> different Kev, mm-hmm. we went we went down to, um, what's the village called again? Let me just Pluckley. find it. Um, uh, Pluckley. Yeah, Pluckley. Yes, yeah, yeah, it was. The, um, yeah, there you go. How do I know that? Are you sure it wasn't me? No, yeah, <laughs> me and you, yeah. It was, um, so it, it, in Pluckley they've got, um, uh, they've got, it's supposed to be the most haunted village in the UK, isn't it? Yeah. And they've, they've got woods there. They call I think they call it the Screaming, Screaming Woods. woods. Yep. Screaming Woods. Yeah. I've there. Yes. So, um, so me and Kev went down there, right? Um, uh, it was it was just a ghost hunting night. Was like bored. Like let's go and let's go yeah, ghost hunting. Yeah. Oh, this this is a cool coincidence then. So, let's see if you experience anything, right? So we got there, right? And there's a little pub. Um, I'm pretty sure the it was horse. Was it the Black Horse? Are you, I see your, been, yeah. your memory is much better than mine. No, I've been there fairly recently. It's a nice little uh, village. Yeah. Um, yeah, it was lovely. Like, the atmosphere is just really nice down there. And so we went, um, sat in the pub until um, closing time. And we went out and there's, um, uh, you know, you've got a little graveyard. I'm pretty yeah. sure that was, like, next door to the pub, actually. It was next door to the pub, yeah. So we're, we're there, right? It's about... That's maybe like half twelve, one o'clock in the morning, and um, and like I said, the atmosphere is just a nice. It's it's just a nice atmosphere. There's nothing actually scary about the place, um, and so the plan was to just hang out in the village for a little bit, right? Not look too too dodgy, so we end up, <laughs> so the police end up uh, uh, coming to see us. But um, 
hanging around, we went in the graveyard and everything, took some pictures. Um, and then uh, there was a guy came along walking his dog. And um, he, we, we had a chat with him. He's a really nice guy. He said, oh, yeah, people come down here all the time, um, uh, sort of ghost hunting and stuff. But I, even then, I was kind of, so imagine it's really dark and you've got this guy who's walking his dog. And um, we're talking to him, so we're interacting with the guy. But he was wearing some odd clothes, um, really old-fashioned. The only the way, way I can describe it was kind of like as if he was a fisherman, right? Mm-hmm. Um, he had like sort of big, sort of longer boots on, and his whole clothing was just a little bit odd. Anyway, he was an old guy, so you know that didn't really think much of it then. Um, and then we said goodbye to him, and then he walked off. And I was like, he was wearing some strange clothes, like mm-hmm. not not your typical, not normal clothes. Anyway, not for this period of time. Anyway, um, and then, uh, but a really nice guy. And then we went off into the woods, um, and it was absolutely pitch black, proper dark. <laughs> so it was quite cool. So we were in there taking pictures and stuff, and we were there until about four in the morning. Um, the strangest thing, like we heard. You could hear a stream off in the distance somewhere, and there was a lot of cracking and um, around. Uh, you know, you could hear your general kind of sounds that you would expect in the woods, actually. Um, we didn't hear any screaming, but apparently that is foxes anyway, because foxes do sort of scream a little bit. Um, the very strangest thing, though, was probably about it was around three o'clock in the morning, church bells, mm. and... We, so we're in the woods, pitch black, we're taking pictures, and then every so often we're putting the torches on and like, so we can see. And then church bells. And when the church bells sounded, we just kind of stood there um, and we were like, just listening to them as if it was a normal thing. And then we were like, hold on a minute, it's three o'clock in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> Why is the church bells going off at three o'clock in the morning? <laughs> that is a bit weird. That the weirdest thing, and then that so that was our experience in in Pluckley. That was funny. This, this old boy's probably got home, and his wife's gone. Scare any more tourists around there with your little <laughs> old costume on? Yeah, a couple of lads, but they didn't realize they, they didn't actually question my old clothing. <laughs> Shall we finish with just um, a little bit about the psychological aspect of horror? So it's the, the the whole theme of it, though, isn't it? Sort of um, how how the those psychological aspects can really tap into our deepest fears. Uh, yeah. the, um, the young universal consciousness, where ooh. we have a shared experience with everyone and a connection, and the subconsciousness that, that links it. Is that um? Would that also be when you have a jump scare and everybody has a jump scare at the same time, or are we talking more about the deep feelings? No, of fear? you're talking about the deep fears, like why are you? Why are a lot of people afraid of certain things? Is because it's a, is it Jung talked about the universal shared consciousness or something? The our deepest darkest fears are shared amongst the whole of the human race. Yeah, I mean, that's probably to do with, uh, you would think, I mean, I'm think, trying to think about this logically, right, but it's got to be something to do with um, how how we evolved, how our brains evolved when, you know, we didn't have cushy lives, <laughs> when when there were real dangers out there. Um, you know, maybe, maybe other uh, human types who might come in and kill you and steal your stuff or take over your tribe or something. It's um, a shame that I'm not fears. really scared natural or the dark or anything now. I used to be when I was a kid, mm. terrified of the dark. Now I'm like, I miss not being afraid of anything, apart from spiders. But... <laughs> but yeah, but you can easily scare yourself. Just switch all the lights off, right? When you, well, when you go up, like after this podcast, right? When you go upstairs to bed, switch all the lights off. And then imagine something is like behind you and then walk up the stairs <laughs> and then feel yourself go, oh, and then you probably leg it up the stairs instead. <laughs> no, you see, I, I do that all the time because obviously your wife's sleeping at the moment because she's night. So I will have to turn off all the lights in or I can't turn any lights on upstairs. So I'll walk up yeah. in the dark. 
Oh, see, it I've got doesn't bother me anymore. Well, I've got this weird fear um, that it's probably the only like sort of fear that that I wouldn't be able to control. Anyway, the scenario was this: I'm lying in bed asleep, and then some psychopath has snuck into the house with an axe. And the first thing he does is walk into the room and <laughs> bring the axe down on my ankles. Oh. How the hell am I meant to fight back with that? That's the sort of thing, <laughs> if a psycho Bert broke into your house when you were in bed sleeping, the first thing you'd have to do is jump out of bed and then you'd have to run through some woods totally naked or just in your underwear. <laughs> <laughs> and then explain away why that happened. You were sleeping at the time. For anyone the that brink. doesn't know, right? The, yeah, he's talking about the brink. He's talking about the comic book. The first that still scene. made me laugh, but because <laughs> I laughed like Steve, why is she running through the woods naked? And then you put an explanation <laughs> in the next episode. <laughs> the very first part of the comic book is um, a girl <laughs> running through the woods, getting chased by this um, this monster, and then uh, and then the, the, this cryptid, and he um, and he catches her. And tears out her spine and drinks her spinal fluid. And um, <laughs> why is she half naked in this? Well, you've got to have a hook, Kev. You've got to have a hook. naked, Steve. <laughs> Chase from a bed in the middle of the night. I had to explain this later on in the comic book just to satisfy Kev. <laughs> well, that's basically, you just thought it was a cool visual. <laughs> yeah, I did. Yeah. I was like, she's got to be, she's got to be half naked. I mean, why, why wouldn't, why would she be fully clothed, getting chased through the woods in the middle this of the night? That's <laughs> like the extra scene with Patrick Stewart, where he's like, and I look at her, and all her clothes fall off, and I've seen everything. I've seen it all. <laughs> <laughs> what are you talking about? Thinking about the psychological aspects of horror, you've got pure fear, and horror is often used to elicit fear isn't it of obviously because that's what when you go to see a horror film that's what you want you want to feel a bit scared um but you know it can be done in different ways actually it can be done but through suspense um or or through just a sheer violence gore um psychological and, one gets me the most like if you think of yeah the original the exorcist film it's not it's a very slow paced film. It's not a lot, there's no jump scares in it. It just messes with your head, I think. Yeah. That's the best horror rather than like cheap gags and jump scares. It's like, oh, because that doesn't linger with you afterwards, but a creepy scene will linger with you afterwards. Like, I always find one of the most disturbing horror films that I've watched of modern times would be um, Sinister. Yes. That's got some creepy scenes in it, but it lingers with you for a while. Yeah, I tell you what lingered with me. There's um, Sinister's one sort of kind of film, but um, there's a film called Incision, and it. it's it's really disturbing. It's um, it's kind of on par with if if you like if you like films where you end and you just don't know how you feel about it. Then these are the kinds of films you've got, like films like Antichrist. Um, oh, I can't think of any, any more at the top of my head, but Antichrist, another one where you're like, what the hell just happened? Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, unsettling. In fact, the uncanny, that is a term used to describe things like that, actually. Strange, unsettling. Um, another powerful tool used in horror, and it just creates a sense of unease and a sort of dread. You, what we should do to create a real sense of unease for one of these podcasts, we should do podcasts live from Pluckley at night oh that would be awesome wouldn't it yeah yes reporting to you live from Pluckley in the graveyard near Screaming Woods yes let us know in the comments any way you can if you want us to do that yeah, we'll make we'll it do an overnight vigil oh there was something I wanted to mention actually um, it's about the shadow the, the shadow in terms of like um, something that refers to like the dark side of our personality and it's a they say it's um, a Jungian concept, and they say that's because there's a, it, it, something that was talked about by a Swiss um, psychologist called Carl Jung. You know, like mm. um, Jung, 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 Jung. It's J U N G. Could be Jung. It's, no, it's Could be Jung. pronounced that way. Is Jung, it Jung? Jungian, yeah. 
Uh, that's Jungian. what shared universal consciousness is. Oh, that's what Jung talks about. It's a part of us that we always sort of, usually we repress or we deny it. And um, and it's the kind of thing that comes out in, in horror because um, it, it, it's used to explore the shadow, the dark side of our personality. And it the can, dark can, can, side of Yes. <laughs> Kill them all. And it can... Um, Do uh, it. It can make us like confront the our own dark thoughts and desires. I thought that was quite interesting. A horror film will reflect us right back at us. <laughs> yeah, a lot of people like to think that they're um, that they you know they don't have dark thoughts or anything, but I think everybody does at some part in their life. Yep. Apart from me, I'm angelic. <laughs> so uh, in the next episode we shall be summoning demons using Ouija boards <laughs> tune in for next podcast where we, we will of... be communicating with Beelzebub <laughs> the dark yeah. lord can you imagine live Voldemort alright well you've been listening to uh, Kevin Steve on Nerds Talk subscribe to our podcast on Apple, Spotify, Audible, Overcast, YouTube, Rumble. Um, you can find my stuff on at stevensweeney.co.uk and check out my comic book at bringcasefiles.com. And there's a naked woman running through the woods at the start of episode one. <laughs> and if that doesn't give you enough excuse to go out and read it, <laughs> nothing will. <laughs> <laughs> read? They're going to look at it. <laughs> yeah, true. It's all about visuals. <laughs> yeah. Um, Kev, what's your website? It's uh, kevingroverfiction.co.uk and I've just done some updates for it for the first time in a long time as well. So. Oh, brilliant. I'll have a look. Yeah, and I'm looking feedback. and I'm looking forward to um, your new book coming out. Oh, yeah. Oh, I've ordered the paperback proofs, so I should get the paperbacks this week, next week, I think. Awesome. All right, then. Well, until next time, see you later. Stay scared. Bye-bye. <laughs>